Give me more, man. It's like you're sleeping here. You had, you had seven cups of chai, and you have no energy. Let, let me hear it as loud as you can. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, huh? Hey, it's really good to be here, and I have a lot of content. Ah, the clock's not going down. Ah, uh, now it's going down. It, there's a big clock here. I'm going to try to ignore it because I just want to talk to you. So, hi. How are you? Excellent. My name. You know, I'm. Look, I'm so happy to be here in India, my home, where I was born. Let's give it up for India. It's huge. It's a huge deal. You know why? Because I speak at a lot of conferences, and usually. They're in like white people countries, it's fine, it's okay, but my name is Tejas, right? And I often introduce myself like this. Hi, I'm Tejas. Hey, wait, I don't have slides? We need to fix this. It's a very important... There we go. So I say my name is Tejas like contagious for the, for the people to understand. Um, I could say this until 2020 and then being contagious was a very bad thing. <laughs> and so then uh, I had to change it, right? I had to say, hey, I'm Tejas like advantageous but this feels dishonest because I don't know if I'm an advantage how can this like check me out I'm advantageous you know but thankfully react India 2022 I get to just be myself and tell everyone hey I'm Tejas so, it's just good it's just good I can just be myself Tejas in fact um, let me quickly introduce myself and and we'll get started with the actual content um, I work at a company called Zeta that is a sponsor, thankfully. We're thankful to be able to sponsor this conference. Our logo is over there um, under the bronze thing, so we're not cool like Push Owl or anything, but still, yeah, it's nice. Um, and uh, I'm the director of developer relations, so really my job is to manage relationships and make sure all of you get a good time, but also, you know, um, get some education, okay? Um, we're here to talk about today understanding concurrent React with hacks. Understanding concurrent React with hacks. Uh, how many of you have heard of concurrent features in React? Okay, that's good. This number will go up, hopefully, by the end. Um, it's, it's, suspense has been around for a while. Suspense for data fetching is out, but kind of they tell you to use it in libraries and so on. We'll get into all of that good stuff later. Um, but, but first, I need to acknowledge some stuff, okay? Because, listen, this conference is, is very special. Do you feel like this conference is special? Yeah. It's really special to me because um, Manjula you know, and, and Sahil live in, the, the, the organizers, they live in Berlin and we meet up sometimes and talk. And we were at another conference, we were at JSConf Budapest. And Manjula, I was, a, I was an MC there, so I was Ankit of JSConf Budapest. And it's a stressful job, you know. And so Manjula said, hey, do you need anything? She was there, do you need anything? I was like, you know, I have no energy. Next thing I know, she brings me, she goes somewhere, brings me a cup of coffee. You know, this is the mindset of, this is the, the way they, they work so hard to give you all a great time. So I want to say and acknowledge, thank you, Manjula and team. Give, give them, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Um, but there's another reason the conference is very special to me. This one specifically. Because nine years ago, nine, I feel old, nine years ago was my first talk ever. Um, and, and my father was there. It was, a, it was a TEDx event, TEDx Youth at Doha, and that's my dad. If you see him, he's here somewhere. He's actually right there. Um, and my dad is, is here today as well. Um, he's right there. So it's really special. It's really, really special. And so I just want to say thank you, React India. It's like, it's a phenomenal experience. And to think all of this is just for the community and for love. So appreciate it. Anyway, um, we're here to talk about Understanding concurrent React with hacks. But this, this slide, I, it, like, it looks too serious, you know? It's like formal. It has like a suit and tie and stuff. Um, so let's you know, use some comic sans and some internet nostalgia. Um, hack source. Anyone was around at this time or am I just old? Yeah, okay, I'm just old. There's one guy in the back. I'm ashamed I'm 30. Um, let's add some color. Right? Yeah, let's, let's have some fun. This, Learning is fun when it's fun. And nobody likes going to school because your teachers like, sometimes you know, yell at you, right? But like, like, let's make it fun. In fact, this is React India. And listen, I'm all about being true to roots and localness. So instead, we can just go full on. Hacks ke saath tun current React ko samajna. And I might, 
I mean, it's React India. I might just do all the slides in Hindi. Um, and I know there's multiple languages, and I should do them in Konkani, but listen, like, I, give me some, so, at least some um, leeway, you know? Um, before we, we move on with the talk, just a warning. Um, th these are hacks. Um, if, <laughs> if you want to use React properly, um, you're clapping for hacks, awesome. Um, read the docs. The documentation is the source of truth, okay? We're trying to understand some stuff, but I'm not here to tell you, like, use this in your day job in production. But I do believe if you understand the underlying stuff, you can be more effective at your job, okay? So, so this is meant to complement the docs. It's not, it's not the truth, the, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Um, so with that, I want to get into this. And sabse pehle ek chitra, okay? Why are you laughing? I'm Indian, you know? I, I, it's like in the airport in immigration, I came here, right? This guy takes my passport, Indian passport, and he's like, so actually, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm Indian. People don't believe it. Anyway, um, I want to talk about the back end specifically. Um, because with concurrent React, it makes the user experience around data fetching, around I.O., input output at the network, much more comfortable. And that's React's job, to give you a good user experience with I.O. and CPU. Okay, we're talking about the I.O. side, the, the network side. Um, so I want to draw a diagram about back end complexity um, and, and show you how that can conflate or, or inflate your, your UI. Um, and this is important because a lot of this talk is data fetching, so it's important for you to understand. Um, so if we go over to my browser here, and there's a great tool. It's called Excalidra. Anyone, anyone know Excalidra? Yeah, oof, a lot of people. Viju, great, great author. So ex what I want to do is draw a diagram for you of, of why concurrent React is needed. Um, it's needed, again, for rendering large sets of things, but it's also needed for I.O., uh, network input output. Okay? So what we want to do is draw a diagram of, of back end to front end communication. Um, in a very basic sense, why is this a dashed line? I want this. So in a very basic sense, we have a UI that's usually a React app. We have this UI talks to an API that's maybe distributed. Um, and it, it, this is very basic, right? And then this talks to a database, which is Maybe, actually, we'll get to that later. So this is a, a standard, overly simplified application. This is the layers of communication across the stack. What happens, though, is scale. And, and, and concurrent React really solves the use case of scale on multiple levels. So let's talk about that. How does this infrastructure scale? You have a, you have a distributed API. That's cool. But you have a single database. As your database needs grow and start to maybe overwhelm the system, you need to start scaling your database. Now, traditionally, with relational databases, you would scale them vertically. So you would add like memory, you would add disk space, you would add resources, right? And this only goes so far. After this point, you build a supercomputer. Your database machine becomes like this massive, beefy thing. It starts costing money, maintenance time, and infrastructure costs, like electricity and stuff like this. If you want to scale more than that without building like a massive like, you know, Intel, Xeon, gaming, whatever, um, you scale horizontally. So you add multiple database servers, um, and you have some type of primary and replicas. right? So the primary database will receive all the write operations and then save them to the replicas. Um, this is kind of getting to scale already on the back end side. But notice the UI is just the UI. And it's already a bit disproportionate. Um, this will work quite well. But at some point, it's going to get slow. Can someone tell me why this would get slow? That's why I'm giving this talk. So it would get slow because databases read and write to and from disks. And disks are, are usually slow. They're, they're not the fastest. What is faster than disks? SSDs. What is faster than SSDs? RAM, random access memory. Um, this is just by design and meant to be fast. The data structures, everything's optimized for speed. So what you'll do is, in your data infrastructure, you will add, maybe somewhere here, you'll add a in-memory cache, something like this. That's also going to be distributed. And so how it will work is if you get a request to your API, it will check the cache. If the cache doesn't have it, then it will get it from the database once. It'll be slow. But it'll store it in the cache, and then it's going to be fast, always. right? So that's already an optimization. And let's just, let's just make this distributed, and then we're good. right? Um, this will scale. Actually, a lot of companies just have this, and it works pretty well. 
But over time, you accumulate what? You accumulate data volume. You just get loads and loads. Your terabytes become petabytes. Become, you get a lot of stuff. And if it's a social app like TikTok, Instagram, um, anything with a lot of, like Reddit, anything with a lot of content, you have just tons and tons of posts. What do you need? You need a way to find what you're looking for. You need a search engine. Um, so this, this OK, let's, let's add this at scale. So let's go here, and we'll do, um, let's do a search engine. And that's also going to be a distributed system. And you know, ooh, look how complex. And so now your database needs to save itself into your search engine, which is another database. And your app needs to know like, when to talk to what. And this is data infrastructure at scale. Pretty much every application on the web that is at any amount of scale will have some variant of this. Keep in mind, this is oversimplified because it's React, right? Notice, what do you notice here? What I notice is that everything has scaled except the UI. Like, the UI has just been this thing sitting there. This is why we need concurrent React, right? Because the back end and the front end both need to handle the growth of companies, the growth of complexity, the growth of data volume. Um, so concurrent React solves the problem of, of CPU-bound work. Um, by being able to pause rendering and pick it up asynchronously, concurrently, some would say, and, and also solves the problem of network stuff, so data fetching specifically. In this talk, we will cover not the CPU stuff, but instead we will cover data fetching. We'll talk about data with concurrent React. Um, this is, I think, probably my last slide uh, in, in English. In fact, you know what? Let's just let's, let's do this. Um, I don't know the Hindi word for data, if this is wrong. Um, I just, it's literally just data in Hindi. Um, React me. Data lane ke teen tarike. Um, I'm Indian. You don't have to do that. I just, it's, <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I want to talk about three ways to fetch data in React. Um, how, how do we do this? There's multiple ways. So, you know, typically in React apps, probably the most common pattern to, to, to data fetch, which is not a problem, for small use cases, is number one, you, you render your component. Your component appears on the screen. Then you fetch, right? If you've written this, you've probably written this code. Um, you, you have a React component, and you're like const data set data use state null. And then use effect, you fetch, fetch dot then set data. And you will never do dot catch dot then set error. You know, this, forget the error handling. That's most of us, if we're being honest, come on, it's about hacks. Um, yeah, you're laughing because oh, he caught me. Um, re render then fetch. It's really common. But there's another use case for fetch then render. How many of you use this in production apps? Like no one, like, like three, four people out of this whole room. Um, this is a bit of an edge use case, I would say. And it's maybe used more in server rendering. But the idea here is you don't fetch inside your component body. You fetch in module scope. So as soon as you import something, you start fetching there. And then when that promise resolves, you set state inside the component. It's a rare pattern. Um, it does provide some benefits. For example, if you start fetching on the server, maybe the networking is better and so on. But in, in, in cases you, where, you, where it matters, it does help. But generally, it's, it's just harder to reason about. And since so many people have not seen this pattern, maybe teaching it can be hard. The premier way to work with this in React 18 with concurrent features is render as you fetch. It's cool. So React will render your component tree. You have, like, like, let's use the example of a Facebook uh, time, like, post, what's on your mind, right? You have this, this or timeline even better. So how it will work is it will fetch the timeline elements and then come to some place where it needs to lazy load a component or do some data fetching. It can pause rendering, fetch something from the network, and continue like in that spot. That is, you render and then pause and fetch. So you render as you fetch. It's, 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 it's excellent for performance and usability and UX. This is pretty much my last slide. And the rest, we're just going to code some stuff. Um, I want to show you these examples in practice, like with a React app. Um, and so let's just write some code. Let's exit out of this. I'm going to quit. You know what? I don't want to click this. If, you, if I open Signal, you see my personal texts. I should have quit that. Can I quit it anyway? Um, what we have, we have localhost 3000, which is not running. So let's start by, by running that. We'll do yarn parcel source index.html. So I'm just going to start a dev server, and it should be 1234 is the port. 
So this, what we have is a jokes app, okay? Um, anyone know Shruti Kapoor? He's a developer. Wow, fan club. Awesome. Yeah, Shruti um, used to work at PayPal and, and really genius uh, React developer. Can recommend. She has a great talk also on Concurrent React. Um, she also has a GitHub repo of developer jokes. Uh, and I want to make a, how many of you know this repo? So many of you are nodding. Wow, okay, yeah. So we, uh, what I want to do is build an, an, a UI around this um, and show these jokes, okay? So how do we do that? And I want to make this fetching thing show you Concurrent React. So I took Shruti's jokes, and I put them in a database um, on, on my favorite database platform, Zeta. Um, and, and so I, this is what it looks like. So we have, we have, we have a blank screen. Let's, let's reload, and hopefully the internet works. OK, so we have this, this collection of databases. And my dev jokes is here, right? So I click this. And these are all of the jokes in the database. There's a lot of them. And I can just scroll and scroll and scroll, but I really just want to query this in my React app. And I want to you know, render, then fetch, fetch, then render, and then render. I want to fetch these, these jokes specifically. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll get a code snippet here. JavaScript fetch is what I want. And I'll include an, a temporary like, authentication thing, just so I can fetch quickly. And my goal is to get jokes here. So I will just, um, what will I do? I will render, then fetch. So if I open my terminal, um, and let's do VS Code. Just open the editor. And let's just write some code. So I will quickly run the dev server again. And this is the component, by the way. So we have an app. And what you can see is, in our React component, let me minimize this, we have h1, the jokes. That's this thing. We have an input for search. That's this thing. And we have a paragraph and then a jokes component. And the jokes is, you know, is, is a thing that maps over jokes and renders a joke, right? This should be familiar to you if you've used React. What I want to do is fetch this. Why is this empty? This is empty because set jokes is never called. It's just the initial value, which is an empty array. It's just like nothing. So let's, let's render. So this component is rendering, but it's not fetching. So we'll do that. We'll do render, then fetch. We'll use effect. Um, remember, all of this is hacks. This is not supposed to be good code. Um, and we'll paste that code snippet. And instead of console logging the response, we'll set jokes to response.records. And I think this should be enough. Let's uh, save that. Let's uh, reload. And I, I, I think that should be good. Am I making a network request? That's the other thing. It's in fetch. I'm not making a network request. Why? Am I? I am. OK, great. I just needed to hard reload. It was cache. You know parcel? Anyone use parcel? Yeah, good. Don't use it. <laughs> the cache will kill you. OK, anyway. Um, sorry. I, I feel bad for doing that on stage. But Veet. Veet is great. I should have used Veet. Anyway, OK, so um, these are the jokes. I'm querying the database. They're working. It's great. Um, I don't have search, though, um, because, well, you know, I can type like wife. Um, <laughs> there's a good joke about that. But I don't find it. So what I can do is run this effect every time search changes, right? And then in query params, instead of just page, I could do something like, why is this? Let's, let's make this clean. Uh, we'll do json.stringify. Yeah, let's do it like this. And we'll say, you know, if I, ooh, 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 ooh. All right, we'll say if I have search, then include a search. Otherwise, give me the results without a search. And here I can say, you know, filter where jokes joke um, contains search. It's just a substring match, nothing fancy. So now, if I, so now it works. So married life of a developer, wife, right 100%. <laughs> That's, uh, so there's, this kind of works, right? So profan, console. So, OK, so we have this app. And we are now doing render, then fetch. The React component renders, we fetch, and then the data appears. Okay. In fact, what we can do is we can throttle this network request a bit to make it look um, slow. Because unfortunately, Zeta is way too fast. Anyway, um, let's, yeah, one second. And so now, what we'll see is ugly UX. So if I reload this, you see that? That's nasty. It's called FAUC, flash of unstyled content. We, we we, it, it, you ever load a website and like stuff appears and layout shift and it moves? Yuck. We can do better. In fact, this is why React exists. Because like, let's make this even worse. Let's do like 1.6 seconds, right? Um, ugh, look at that. Nasty. So how can we improve this? 
Um, will, will fetch then render help? Probably not, but let's try, just to, just to be on the same page. So let's take this render then fetch and move it to fetch then render. What we do is we, is we just copy everything before the set joke. So we copy this actual fetch call here, and we move it out into module scope. So this is the React component that's actually rendering like jokes. When we import this, let's fetch then, OK? So let's do something like we'll fetch here before anything, before the function is defined. We'll say const promise is this. We'll fetch that, serialize it to JSON. We can also copy our options out of here. Why not? Um, but notice we actually lose something when we do this. We lose search because search is a prop. We can use like X state or some global state management, import search from there, whatever. Um, but that's not the point of this demo. So I'm happy to just kind of get rid of search. Um, so we have options. We're fetching in module scope. And what we'll do is when the promise resolves, we'll just do that. Right? So we're fetching early, super early. And then inside the component, whenever, we'll just set state. Does that make sense? Um, that's, that's fetch, then render. So let's save this. I told you it was going to be hacks. Let's save this. Reload. Yeah, OK, we still have the Falk. We still have the Flash Von Style content. But generally, as a best practice, right? It's a, it's a good idea to fetch as early as you can, um, because you want that data to be ready when people are around. And also, if, if you're doing server-side rendering, this is actually pretty viable. Um, the problem, though, the big danger, is if you fetch in module scope on the server side, and you have different users doing different stateful things on the same server, you can understand how things get out of sync. Um, and this is a huge pitfall. So, so you'll want to be careful with this. That is fetch then render. Just to recap the code, um, we, have, you know, we do fetch here in module scope. We assign the promise to something. And then inside the React component, whenever that resolves, we, we go about setting state. OK. Um, let's spend some time talking about render as you fetch concurrent React. Before I do this, I need to give you a disclaimer. I already gave you a warning earlier. You remember what that was? This is hacks. Do not use it in production. But so. I believe that when you understand the reason why things are the way they are, you become more fluent in a tool. You, do, you understand React more. And when you understand React more, you can write code that works with React more as opposed to against React. Okay, that, that's the goal here. So let's look at um, render as you fetch. But before we do that, we need to look in the React blog. And what does it say? Um, in React 18, you can start using suspense for data fetching in opinionated frameworks like Relay, Next.js, Hydrogen, or Remix. Ad hoc data fetching with suspense is technically possible, but not recommended as a general strategy. Um, so I read this, right? And I'm like, OK, OK, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. But it's technically possible, though. Let's try. Um, this is what the libraries do under the hood. But they handle more edge cases for you, which is why it is a good idea to use them. But let's understand what they do under the hood for learning and hacks. Um, so what I want to do is render as I fetch. And that will also then give me the ability to pause rendering wherever I want and give me more fine-grained control of my user interface. Okay? So let's do that. Let's open the editor. The fundamental primitive of a React suspender that enables um, render as you fetch is called um, a resource. It's not called a resource, but this, is, this was all in, in the earlier demos and discussions. Um, so what we need is a factory. We need um, const create resource. And what is this going to do? Is that text big enough, by the way? Can you read it? Yes? OK, cool. I love it. It's India, so everyone's like, it's the, you know. Um, create, so we'll create a resource. What is a resource? A resource is something that does something asynchronously and then returns an object that React can read and understand. Okay? So as, oh, wow, GitHub Copilot writing code for me. That's cool. We'll pretend that didn't happen. We'll write it ourselves. Or I can just press tab. OK, done. Um, no, we're not doing that. So the resource gets as an argument something that returns a promise. Okay? So as an argument, we'll say thing, thing that returns a promise. And it, that's the type. It returns a promise of anything for now. This should be a generic type, but these are hacks for like the third time. So we'll use a lot of any in TypeScript, which, by the way, I don't even need. If I wanted real hacks, I wouldn't even use TypeScript. Anyway, um, so 
Now, what, what does this thing do? Um, first, we call, we say const prom uh, yeah, promise, and we just call the function that returns a promise. Boom. Done. Okay? Now, we, we need some state variables. We'll do status. Status is a good one. And it's pending by default. It's loading because it's like this hasn't resolved, so it's loading. We'll also let result be null in the beginning, but when the promise resolves, we'll just set this to whatever the value is. Okay? Um, now we need to return something to React that React knows how to work with. And then we just hand it off to React. What do we do? We first do promise.then. And when the promise resolves, we get you know, something. And we'll do, uh, we'll do the following. We'll do status equals done. Result equals something, right? This is, this is kind of what you do. We're just setting these things here. Let's be nice people and also catch some error. Um, and we'll just set the result to that. And we'll say status is error, OK? Great. So now we're setting our internal state for our suspender. What do we do? It, let's now return to React something it can work with. So we'll go here. And we'll return an object that has a read function. And this is going to do some stuff, exactly this. I prefer switch case, to be honest, for this, because it's nice. So we look at the status of this thing. Okay? And in case the status is done, right? we just return the result. Now, in case the status is error, we throw the result. And lastly, in case it's pending, we need some way to signal to React, hey, wait, 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 pause rendering. We're not done yet. In case the status is pending, we actually throw the promise. Right? Um, in JavaScript, it doesn't care. You can throw whatever you want. You can throw your laptop. Just take, take it in. You know? I can throw a pack of stickers. Who wants stickers? I have stickers. You want? There. So see? JavaScript. You can throw anything. Um, so this is how it works. When you throw a promise, React, your suspense component, anywhere in the deeply nested tree will, will be able to catch it and just pause rendering at that point. That is why. Suspense in React works exactly like try-catch. Have you ever thought about this? Like, try-catch, no matter how deep your code is, no matter how deep your call stack is, wherever you are, you can catch anything thrown from anywhere. Suspense is the same. So this is our suspender now. We, we do this, and it's great. So now we just need to create a resource. Resources are usually created as early as possible, so module scope. They're not created inside your React component because your React component re-renders a lot. And so you don't want to recreate your resource like a ton of times. You'll end up with some type of infinite request loop if you do that. So just to be safe, um, we'll do const, let's say, joke resource, right? And we'll just say create resource of what, though? We need something that returns a promise. Thankfully, we have this thing over here. So we'll just copy all of this. I might keep the options global and just copy the promise thing. And in create resource, we need to give it a function that returns a promise. So we'll start with function. And we can just actually just return here. Return, done. Um, so this returns a promise of JSON. In fact, we can do a dot then and return the, the actual records as well. Why not? OK, so we have this, and it looks good. It returns a promise. Um, let's use this thing. So what we want is promise is no longer, we don't need use state. We don't need use effects. All of this goes away. And instead of jokes, which is no longer defined, we can do joke resource dot read. We get back the array. It tells me it's null or undefined. Remember how this is all about hacks? So yeah, it's, it's better. Wait for Brandon's talk after lunch. He's going to talk such nasty things about me. Anyway. It's hacks. This is how we learn. As if you never like console log to just see your errors. Come on. Judging me, everybody. He's taking a picture. He's like, anyway, OK, so um, he'll put me in his slide. Anyway, look, it works. So if I reload, it's instant. And you'll notice um, we still have some Flash of Unstyled content, but it's, it's, it's in front of the search. But we still see the jokes UI. What's with that? That doesn't go away. So our Flash of Unstyled content is now localized somehow. How can this be? Um, let's take a look at what's happening under the hood. Um, let's go here and go to, go to our app, right? And you'll notice we have no suspense components anywhere at all. Um, so let's start with that. Let's go here 
And just like at the root of our React app, we'll just do like suspense. Um, it's telling me it's undefined. Is it? Oh, no, I import it. Cool. So now it's, it's doing what it should. But what if I want to keep even this stuff and only make this go away when I reload the page, right? I should be able to do that um, by adding suspense around the joke component just here. So if I add a suspender, suspense component here, I should be able to, if I reload, look at that. So because Re what React is doing is it's rendering all of this, pausing to fetch jokes, and then filling the hole later. And I can even do a fallback. I can say fallback, uh, sorry, wrong component. Fallback is wait, da, jokes are coming. Um, you tell I have some Tamil in my, anyway, okay, so, oof, that's not good. Why did that happen? That happened because my temporary API key expired. <laughs> um, I will get a new one. There we go. Okay. And I will just, you know, let me just reload this actually. Get a code snippet. Get a new token. Copy my options. You see nothing. The API keys live forever. Actually, they shouldn't because by design we want them to expire. Anyhow, paste that. We don't need the fetch. We just need the options. And the new API key. All right, let's try. So we're back. And it says, wait, dad jokes are coming. Now you can imagine if this request takes really long, right? Let's go to our jokes component and actually throttle this like super long. So um, let's return throttle, and we'll throttle this fetch for like two seconds. Okay. So now we just sit there and wait for two seconds, and you know we just get this fallback. The cool thing about this is I can selectively choose what parts of my UI I want to hide and what I want to show because suspense is able to pause rendering where I tell it, at the suspense boundary it's called. How I can do that is if we go to VS Code, um, this suspense thing, if I take it just up the tree to hide the paragraph, okay? And if I save now and reload, notice the paragraph is gone, right? So I can selectively choose, do I want to present things all at once or do I want to present just some stuff before? I could even hide, look, question for you, true or false? Does it make sense to show a search field while I have no data? You're, you're saying no, some of you are saying yes. It's a, it's a divisive question. Some will say yes because maybe I want to pre-filter. Right? Maybe I just want my job already. Maybe I come from a request query params. Some say yes. Some say no because it doesn't make sense because there's nothing to search on. I agree. Um, but if we wanted to hide it, we can. So we just move the suspense higher up, um, and now, you know, and we could even hide literally everything and pre present stuff all at once. We, can, we have this control with render as you fetch, because it's literally rendering, pausing, fetching, continuing, okay? Um, this does present a bit of a UX problem, though, if we have search. So notice the search doesn't work, right? So let's go implement that. Um, this isn't really that hard, thankfully. So what we can do is, we can say our read method accepts an argument, um, search, which is a string. Okay? Um, actually, wrong place. We can say, we can do it here. So create resource. We give it a thing that returns a promise, but we can also give it another argument, search, as a string. And now thanks to TypeScript, it's just telling me everything's wrong where I'm using it. So what I want to do is where I create resource, let's make search optional even. So let's... Let's do this. Ooh, our thing that returns a promise could even, okay. Um, let's do it like this. We have search. This is the beauty of JavaScript. You can put whatever you want anywhere. So this is an optional string. And when we fetch, um, hmm, I'm trying to think where's the best, anyone have a suggestion where's the best place to put this? We're just hacking right now. Maybe we can put it in create resource somewhere here. Um, let's do it like this. So we have this function, search, uh, but this is never called. I don't know. I'm confused. Um, let's, I got it. I got it. Let's put it in read. That's probably the best place. So let's, um, let's say this gets search as an optional string. Let's leave it empty here, but you know, search. Um, why are you complaining? Oh, search is not defined? But search is defined. I'm, wait, search string. Don't you just love hacks? Okay. There. This is perfect. 
we can give thing that returns a promise also a search string. Perfect, this is fine. And so now we create the resource, and I think we can give it search here, right? This is the f this function accepts search. TypeScript, I would be nowhere without TypeScript. Um, cool. And so now we can include in the options, which is global, some query params. So we'll do dot 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 options, and then what is it? Body, right? So we'll do body instead of just page this. We'll say if we have a search json.stringify, and instead of doing a string, we'll do this. Um, otherwise, we'll just keep it like this. And in the search ternary branch, we'll add search. Sorry, uh, it's filter joke contains search. Ah, perfect. Good. This kind of works. So now we can, cre we can create this resource here with this function. But now if we want to respond to this prop, how do we do it? We keep the resource in state. So we'll say joke r for joke resource, set joke r. It's not joker. And we use state. Um, and we'll keep the initial resource as joke resource, just like that. Um, joke resource. But joke resource is not a function. What? Joke resource, like that. Perfect. We get back a resource. Now, when search changes, we want to recompute that. So we'll do search when, when it changes. And we'll set joke r to remember how this is a hack. So we should be dry, as in don't repeat yourself. But you know, just boom. Um, it's the same resource, but with search. And so we're just resetting the resource here. Okay? I don't know if this is going to work, to be completely honest with you. It maybe won't. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Thing that returns a promise is not a function. Excellent. Because it's true, because the signature changed. So create resource gets search first, which is here. I, I have questions about my hack right now, but we'll keep going. Look, this doesn't make any sense. You see this? What in the world am I doing? Um, gosh. OK, wait, now the jokes are coming. They're probably, oh, they still come. Wow. Um, wife, does that work? Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Um, how do I improve this? That's the question. Anyone, anyone have any ideas? Create resource. Do I do something like this? What I want is, cre oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, someone's saying something. What are you saying? Nothing? OK. Um, well, I have a few minutes, so I'm literally just going to debug here. And you're welcome to shout out suggestions. But I won't spend too long because I don't want to bore you. I think the signature is wrong, first of all. right? Um, this does get a thing that returns a promise and so on. Why, why are you complaining? Search is undefined. But we can make it optional. Perfect. Create resource can be this. This is great. Um, this function accepts search. And it uses search. This is perfect. I think this should work. Um, lastly, in our use effect, should be good. OK. Does it work? Wife? No? What? Oh, OK, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm, I give it up for that guy. I'm, I'm not using my, my joke R from state. Fantastic. Show me. OK. Oh, it works. Give it uh, one more time, this guy. Um, I was using it from say, OK, so now I have this UI. But look, it's kind of lame, because on every keystroke, I W, oh, sh A. What about, OK. Ah! Wait. So on every, if I want to type wife, are yaar. Like, what is, so I have to like type one key and then wait. It's the worst UX ever. Yes? No, you like it? We need more talks about UX then. Anyway, so this is clearly not good. And this is kind of against the problem that, that suspense for data fetching solves, right? Um, I don't like that. I don't like hiding that. Now, we can obviously solve this by just moving the suspense boundary under the input. But I still don't like this, this very much, because um, it's still a bit jumpy. What if there was another way? So part of concurrent React is the ability to Signal to React what updates are high priority 
and what updates are low priority. Okay? There's an excellent talk later today by Mateusz about the details of this. We won't spend time there because we've already spent quite a bit, quite a bit of time exploring here. Um, but what I want to show you is how you can signal to React, hey, this update I'm trying to make is a lower priority update. Prioritize that thing. In this context, what should be the higher priority update? Text input, exactly. Exactly. When you type, it has to update. You have to see the text input update. Because if you imagine you press a key and then like two seconds until the you know, text update changes. So what we'll do is we'll tell React that this wait da jokes are coming, this refetching. We'll say this is a low priority update. And we can do that using a hook called use transition. Um, this is new um, in, in React 18. And how, this is how we use it. So we say const, we get is transitioning and start transition. We get a tuple, and we get a tuple from this use transition hook. And instead of just setting the state directly, we start a transition to set the state. And this will tell React, OK, whatever, whatever's about to happen in here can take as long as you need. But there's higher priority stuff. So we'll wrap this and start transition like this, save. And now, wait, dad jokes are coming, but as I type, Nothing jumps. Even with a two second delay, nothing jumps. It will go, it will refetch, and it will update whenever. But notice, as I type text, this is what I want to show you. As I type text, I can type anything I want. I can type, you know, and, and my UI is responsive. Um, in fact, if we now remove the throttle of two seconds and make it like 600 or 500 milliseconds, right? Now, if we, if we, re, if we re reload this, um, what we'll see is wait, dad jokes are coming. And after like about half a second, we'll get jokes. And this should be way faster. So, so that's, it doesn't interrupt the UI. Does that make sense? We could even hide now. We could put the, sus the suspense boundary and hide the text input. And this will not interrupt anything, because it's a lower priority update. So we'll say, look at this. It's just easily updating. You see that? It's phenomenal. Um, let's go and remove that throttle as well. OK, we did. What if we remove the throttle completely? Um, just you know, go away entirely. Oh, did I bring myself into callback hell here? Do I? Uh, curly? Ah, no. Something else? So, oh, I returned here. What? So return. Okay. So now we're not throttled, but it's still slow. Isn't that weird? Uh, the first one is slow because there's two. Um, but this is yeah, this is much faster. So there we go. So that's just a little deep dive. So this is how you understand why they say use a library. Um, they say use a library because what we just did was understand what libraries do. Libraries like React Query, like Remix, like Hyd Hydrate, Hygen, whatever, sorry. Um, these libraries build suspenders like that under the hood. They have a throw promise. They have the things that we did. They just do them really, really, really well. They handle edge cases that we don't handle. And this is why the React team says it's technically possible to do this, but it's going to cost you a lot of time and money. Um, instead, use a library. Now that we understand the underlying stuff, though, we understand how we can work with these libraries right, to, do, to create better React apps, to create React in a more fluent way. Okay? Let's return to the presentation. So let's recap. Right? I'm just getting rid of English completely now. Whatever. What, 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 what do we learn? Um, we learned the level under libraries. We learned how you build a suspender. We learned when you use concurrent React. We learned how suspense can tell React when to pause rendering, when to fetch, so on and so forth. In summary, we learned how we can fluently work with React suspense. The next question, how many people don't understand Hindi here? Am I just doing a bad? Yes. Good. It's all the white people. I'm joking. Um, that's that this, this, this means how do we use this stuff? Um, as I said, we use it safely. We use hacking for learning. We do not use hacking, and I don't mean like stealing passwords hacking. That's not what I mean, like building nonsense. Right? We, we do that for learning, but not on production. And in production, what do we do? We read the docs, and we rely on libraries and the React core team. Okay? That's really important. With that, React India 2022, shukriya.
Thank you, Tejas, for that electrifying talk. Yeah. React, react.